It's a Q&A day, it's a Q&A day. Well, where I am today, here in the spare bedroom, I'm looking out the window and it is a gorgeous day. Blue sky, sun shining, I hope the sun's shining for you too. So what are we going to shoot the breeze with today? What have I got? Let's see. First question, always, because I try and not look at them so it has a wee surprise element. So here we go. All right. Wendy. Just Wendy. Hello, Wendy. Hi, Mark. I love the new album, Stargazer. You got it as a birthday present? Fly and cure. Someone's got good taste there for the birthday present. Would like to know which is the easiest track to write and record. Look forward to seeing... Oh, uh, okay. What's the easiest track? Hmm. I don't, I don't really see the... the, the you know, easy... No, there, there, there was none that was really particularly light. I guess to record... We all had a, there was a certain process with it, but with, with this album, but uh, there wasn't ones that was like, oh, that was really easy to do, because I think that uh, in the writing process, for instance, "Don't Be Scared," the song "Don't Be Scared," was a was a song that that came very quickly. You know the 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 music of it, the lyric, um, also uh, was kind of was a little bit to to and fro and with that one to 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 pick the right kind of story we wanted to tell. And that wee song, but the writing of that song was pretty easy, you know. That came quickly, but um, you know, because I don't want to say that my, you know, my songs come easy, you know. But uh, you know, there's always certain songs that offer themselves up quicker. If that answers your question, and uh, Wendy, happy birthday! When it, and you got a good present, huh? like it, yeah. Who's next? Sharon. Hi, Marty. How did you decide that these are the days would be the first single? Good question, Sharon. Sometimes they're the the most obvious ones for me. That was the first song that. Be pen for the album, and that, uh, and so that's uh, uh, for me. That was like, okay, that's the first single. That was my science behind, it. <laughs> and I just thought it was there was a lovely feeling and a great kind of positivity about the song, and I loved the uh, the idea of the lyric as well. So it just seemed to be the most obvious choice, Sharon, for, uh, to be the first single. And I just think it, that there's enough elements in there that you, uh, for me, that that uh, that, that re represents the album in all its colours as well. So uh, these are the days, and I was so happy with the, with the response that I got from it too. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Let me see. Anne-Marie Burrell. Hello, Anne-Marie. Love your name. Uh, one of my favourite songs in the album is Hey You. What was your inspiration on the writing of this song? Well, that was, you know, that, that song was another one of these things that I was watching the news, and there was things coming in in the news that I just thought, uh, well, you know, it was a particularly bad news day, and uh, I was thinking to myself, "Oh, that really? That's you know, that's really quite powerful." You know, the things that I was seeing in the images on it, and it kind of got me thinking that I was thinking of the future. You know, like when you know, if you have children come into the world at this time and through the, the strange times that we're navigating, when they look back at this, uh, well, how will they think about this period in in, in history, and also just just having all those fears. And there was things going on in the world, like, you know, the whole Brexit thing was happening. You know, that was that that was that was also happening in my uh, on the news that day. They were talking about that, how we'd set that up and and about the separation of that. And I didn't quite know how I really felt about that. It was kinda like you know, and there was and also that at the time there was you know, there was people highlighting what we were doing, you know, with the world. And how it was, you know, getting messed up by all these industries and stuff like that. And there was a segment on that in the news as well. And I thought to myself, "Whoa, that's a powerful. How, you know, if you know, God bless us to have children in our future. What kind of world are we? Are we going to leave them? You know, uh, or, or at least bring them into?" And it made me think. Uh, uh, ask all those questions, and that lives in that song. So, and I hope I hope people get that from that. You know. You know, are you in or are we out? You know, Brexit and all that kind of thing. So, yeah, great question. Good question. Helen Bramford Lines asks, when you write a new song, uh, when you have a new song, who do you want to play it to in first? Who do you get your opinion of? Fans, family, work colleagues? Yeah, all of the above. You know, I always think that, you know, playing songs to family members uh, is always a good gauge as well. You know, because, the, you know, your family, after can be brutally honest and and I think that's that that's 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 to be cherished and uh, 
So yeah, that's what I do. I kind of send it to friends also and other musicians that I know and say, hey, what do you think of this wee track? And I've got a wee idea or, you know, uh, what do you think? You know, and it's always it's always good to get feedback. And because sometimes, I, you know, so, songs that I'm really, like, excited about, I think, oh, this is, you know, I really love this song. This is, oh, this is, everybody's going to love this song. I, I, bet, I bet you everybody likes this song. No. No, not always the case. <laughs> that's very me. Oh, that's the single. You know, you know. Some, I mean, you know. Sometimes it's obvious, and other other times it's a bit of a leap of faith for me. You know, um, uh, picking what's going to be the next single and stuff like that. But I think I think it's it's important to me that you know when this when this album came out, and I would look at some of the some of your feedback on it and how you do it. You you, you just kind of pick them for me in a, in a in a strange sort of way by how you how you tell me you say oh i really like this song from it and that's it and that flags it up and that's a good gauge for me too but and, and i always think it's interesting when you do it when you write a song and then it goes into the live environment and then it becomes something completely different again and people say well I, I, you know i liked it on the album but i prefer it live because it does a it's, it's another treatment another different way you can look at the song uh and that's something that i'm also looking forward to when we get back in doing the uh, live shows and stuff like that to be able to take these songs and show them and uh, show them in that live environment, and see where we can take them, because sometimes once the, the performance is captured and it's maybe six months down the line, I'll go, oh, I wish I did, did this with that, or uh, so, and you get that opportunity to do that in a live environment. So, hope that answers your wee question. Good question. Mwah! Kim Jeffrey says, amazing album. Thank you, Kim. Thank you very much. And your question is. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Looking forward to watching you on TV. Ba -la 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 -la. Ah, what's my favourite song? Do I have a favourite? Yes, I do. They're all my favourites. No, but I, uh, I just love Black Horse. Love it. Always have. Really think it's an exciting song. Great. You know, it was fun doing it. It's got a great stream of conscience that happened when the recording of it and. And what was really what was really quite interesting about the recording process with that song is the original song is twenty two minutes long, twenty two, and we managed to edit it down to eleven. And there's you know there's there's a couple of ways to to skin that song. And I was being so inspired by like the Tom Tom Club, I loved that, uh, you know, uh, and and I wanted the, the the guitar, the arrangements and stuff like that have a, a really very distinctive feel to it, and the beat straight there and. The, the whole crazy lyric that's going on with it, uh, which is uh, which was inspired, you know, uh, the images of, uh, it's like a little couple who are sitting on the couch, basically, uh, in, their, in, their, in their living room, and uh, they're changing the channel. You know, they're changing the channel and, uh, you know, kind of channel surfing, especially, you know, with these strange times at the moment, again, you know, we spend a lot of time in the TV. That, and and it, it never ceases to amaze me that you could watch something on TV that's so poignant and it can, like, change your life, you know, and inspire you. And then you click the button again and it's and the next image you see, is, you know, is a woman putting a turkey into an oven or something quite surreal like that and it, 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 quite mundane. And I, I, so the, the lyric was inspired by channel surfing, basically. You know, and, that, and 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 that's exciting. You know, in a way, like, you know, TV was on. You know, press the button, up came on the news. Three streets in London closed, and now we have the weather opening line, and that's how it went. Uh, you know, and that, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of great play with words in it, and I think it's like, and especially just now, you know, when everybody's staying up to stupid o'clock watching TV and box sets, and you know, the, the twenty four hour clock just goes out the window because you're channel surfing at four in the morning and stuff like that. And I think that there's, a, there's also another meaning going on with the with the lyric, you know, that every time I turn on the TV, it keeps telling me lies. And that was like, my take on that was, when I was thinking all these conspiracy theories that was going on pertaining to the, the pandemic and, you know, uh, the politicians and how they were navigating into, uh, getting, uh, navigating these strange times didn't quite resonate, me, resonate with me at times, you know. Uh, and I was wondering, you know, when you go in that search for the truth, you might not necessarily find it on the on the TV or you go on the internet, you can, before you know it, half an hour trying to search for some answers and your head could be completely spinning. So that's basically what Black Horse is about, you know, if that puts it in. And there's a lot more going on with it, but, you know, I don't, I, I always like when people have their interpretation of what a lyric is and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I prefer their analogy more than I enjoy my own. But a wonderful lyric by Chris Sheehan, all the same. Hello, Elizabeth Wilson. 
uh, they've asked me about the artwork inside of the album sleeve, the old tape recorder, uh, your suit, the whole view of New York, you know, the whole, the whole like, premise of it, the girl in the back. Yeah, uh -huh. well, yeah, that was an idea I had. You know, I, I always, you know, I'd been in lockdown and I bought, uh, you, you know, the chance came up for me to do a, a photo session and I had this kind of image of this uh, um, cat, this man, this man, you know, who was inspired by the, the track uh, Urban Alligator, who was uh, uh, on the album. That uh, and this was the, the, the little world that he lived in, and I wanted it to be quite retro. So that the, the the clothes that I picked f for the whole uh, photo session were very, were very much, you know, uh, you know, I've only got myself to blame there because I was very much, you know, like I had that uh, uh, because I think I'd spent so much time in, in pajamas and stuff like that. I thought, oh, you know what, I'm going to have some fun and dress up uh, for this session and 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 see what happens with it. And, and, and I wanted to have a, a quite a strong identity with that so it make a statement with that even in, in, uh, also in the back cover with the you know that really paisley pattern quite funky uh almost 70s vibe I had going on with that so I mean I think that these are big statements and I think it's uh, it's great because these are these are like kind of wee characters that uh, that represent the songs you know when I'm thinking about it wouldn't it be great if they they looked that way or how does that how does that what 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 can I do with that character in that song that's been inspired? What what did it look like? So I wanted to do that. So that's why it kind of kind of had this kind of seventies feel, but as well as being inspired by the music of that genre, uh, very strongly in this album, Elizabeth. And uh, so dressing up was like it, and I wanted to have that almost soldier look for the front cover. You know, you know, I could have went for the smiley shot, and of which I love. You know, don't get me wrong, my smile's been good to me, but I wanted to have a, a, a kind of distinct, straight right down the barrel of the camera lens, with that almost kind of soldier military look to the the whole feel of it, uh, because I had been I'd been watching a lot of kind of sci-fi um, movies that had been made in the kind of early seventies, like Logan's Run and stuff like that, and there's a kind of the, you know, sometimes there's a feel that you'll see some of these sci-fi movies, but the but the uniforms they wear are kind of very much inspired by a time that's maybe a couple of hundred years before or a thousand years before it. But but the but the the sci-fi programs have got that kind of very soldier look, and that's what I was trying to capture in that uh, uh, in that front cover. Well, I don't know, I achieved it or not. It was just fun to do, and I, and I think that's uh, you know I think that's uh, one of my favourite photo sessions. And there's so many different things going on there, you know, with the with the clothes and the whole vibe about it, and the physicality of some of the shots as well, and the way that Simon filmed it, and some of the lenses we used. It, uh, it was a very interesting day, yeah. And it's kind of my my concept, and lots of lots of good people getting involved with it and running with those ideas. And I love those tape to tape uh, reels, tape decks. You know, I have one of those as well, and uh, you know, I've got my guitar in it. That's my Gibson guitar, and. And I just wanted to have some fun with it. I mean, some, there was loads of shots that I've still that, that that we'll probably use further down the line, but that have even strange and more bizarre looks to them. But I think it's just you know you're just dressing up. It's just having a lot of bit of fun, you know. And that's what what I wanted to do because I've been in lockdown, as I said, just cutting about in t-shirts, jumpers, and pajamas. So there you go, Elizabeth. Hello, what have you got here? Joanne Bishop loves the line. The, my, uh, ah, my question is, what life advice would you give to the blue jean legend from those carefree days and these are the days uh, uh, song? What advice would I do? You know, I always think that's an interesting question anyway, where you could go back and say to yourself, right, you know, especially some of the fashion faux pas I've had and some of the haircuts and stuff like that. What are you doing, Marty? What are you doing, yeah. Uh, but wasn't that nice that I shared it with the nation? And I think that, I guess, you know, I mean, there's obvious things that have happened in my life, you know, through the various things, you know, things like, you know, my addiction problems and stuff like that. Yeah, it'd be great to be able to go back and have a little word in that particular phase of my life, you know, and maybe say, you know, don't, well, say very much so, don't do that. But um, I think life's for living and, and it'll, throw, it'll throw you curveballs and... You know, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but I think that just all those all those things that happen in your life make you the man you are, are good, bad, and different, and you learn from them. And I think that's the, the whole part of growing up. Sometimes, 
you know, the, yeah, there is pain in amongst the joy and all those things. And but that's 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 what you want from your life. You know, it can't be can't always be that. But I love that line, blue jean legend, and I love that period in my life where uh, where you know where every where, where we rolled like we invented Saturday night. I just love that lyric and that you have those carefree times when you're, uh, you know, your early teens where you just, you're not totally aware of the the circle of life yet or whatever, that, all those things that come the, the, with, as the older you get and your life is unfolding, you're invincible. Isn't that a great time? And and I think that there's there's lessons when I look back and I reflect on that, sometimes I say, oh, it'd be great to bring a wee bit of that attitude back in and, and tap into that energy and spirit. So the life advice would you give to that blue jean legend would say, enjoy it even more drop those shoulders and take it all in you know because life is life is fleeting life can be fleeting and i think once you understand that whole circle of life more so now when you reflect you know but, uh, but then again that's a bit i'm getting a bit deep there so but good question nice one joanne sam uh garnham hey sam what you got thank you very much brilliant album thank you uh, some really creative songwriting and thought-provoking lyrics the only thing that cuts a diamond is itself superb would love to know the inspiration behind that song glad you asked that diamond is about um you know the, all the pressures that you find in the internet you know with the young young folks who go on that you know the apps to make yourself look perfect and how they can you know put all these body images on you male and female you know i never see you know i think it's 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 a problem that's very rife in our in our society today and 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 also you know i remember when you know dealing with issues that i was dealing with myself um about you know my addictions and stuff like that i also remember there was people who would uh, self-harm you know and they would uh, and that always uh, that was that i always found that quite you know, that, that, powerful, powerful, you know, that they would do that, you know, and, and, and because you, I, you would always see them and you go, well, what have you got to worry about? You're absolutely beautiful. Or, you know, from the outside, they'd look like they didn't have a problem, but they would do that. And and that's, the, the, you know, they would, they would, they would cut themselves in self-harm. And that's what that song's about also, you know, people with um, psychological problems that are brung on or, 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 or stress, and, and that's what they do. And what I mean by that, it's like the only thing that cuts a diamond is itself. Uh, is that, like, you know, you are perfect the way you are, and, and it just it would upset me when I would hear about these things, and and I think that's powerful, and that's one of uh, that's a favourite that song of mine in the end because it, you know the lyric is really saying something that's you know really really speaking about things that are on a deeper level there, and so and that's what it is. You know, the only thing that cuts a diamond is itself, and that's what I, I wanted to get into that song. That you're perfect the way you are. It's only society that that puts these things on top of the, our, our youth culture and say that you should conform to this way and you should look this way and isn't and isn't this this is the way that you should subscribe to and that's not the truth because the thing is is you are perfect the way you are when you when you're born into this world that's it you know it's uh, it, it's life unfolds people put you know say this is what it is or you conform to this but you know what. Let that all go because you're perfect the way you are. Perfect the way you are. Linda Morrison says, uh, you love a new album? Thank you very much, Linda. Oh, you, uh, what are you saying? Oh, Love Me Tonight is a current fave. Love Me Tonight. Yeah, that's great fun doing that song. Um, had that line, the sun rose up over Central Park, lighting us up like a piece of art. And that was the start. That was it. That gave us that. We keep getting the door to start that song, and uh, I, I had been in listened to a lot of Tim Buckley, um, and also you know like Van Morrison, and you know I love all those artists, you know, and I want uh, that. That's that, when I was when I was writing that song, I was kind of I was hoping that would uh, you know I would have that sort of feel to you know the time the pocket the time it was recorded to you know like early seventies feel with it. And because uh, the whole album is, you know, I kind of nod to that, be it, you know, obviously the ugly and one is Bowie, but, you know, early rock, rocks and music too. And I've been listening to a lot of Robbie Robertson also in the band. You know, I think it's a great time. And the early Joe, Joe Cocker, Leon Russell. Mm, yeah. And um, 
you know that so that the, the having all those wonderful musicians in the studio you know that pretty much was you know a couple of takes we had that one well and truly in the bag and a lovely david campbell string arrangement on top of it which uh which is which i thought was so special we just took that song into a whole different dimension for me as well uh great hammond playing by james halliwell and uh so i was really really happy with that song and uh that's See, that's a favourite. Uh, you know, I mean, you see, that's a favourite. They're, they're, at the moment, because it's a, it's a new album, they're all kind of like, I'm just all excited when I, uh, I'm just, yeah, I'm just excited about it, and, you know, because, I, uh, you know, I know that song is going to work well in a live environment as well, and, uh, you know, it just trips me out when I sing it. it trips me out. It's a great place to go. It's a, a, a wonderful lyric by Sean McKenna. And uh, I'm glad you're getting off on it, Linda. Brilliant. So, uh, eh, uh, <laughs> well, I'm just going to read out some names because I see some faces here that I see on my travels uh, and I want to say hello to them. Sue Archer. Sue Archer, hi, yeah. How's it going, Sue? Um, Helen Clayton. Eileen Porter. Doreen Butler. Who else have I got here? Diane Bishop. Um... <laughs> well, they're not random names. I just see. I'm just seeing some uh, pictures of people here, and I go, oh, "I know you. I know you. I know you." Is that? I know that. I know that. But you, Barbara Stones. I know Barbara Stones. I've met you. Uh, aye, it could, it could. You see where I was going there. I just wanted to say hello to a few people that, that, that I recognise the faces. That was pure and simple. I'm used to flying here. What else have we got? Oh. Alexis Sheldon Pell, really looking forward to seeing you on James' show. Ah, okay. Loving the album, thank you very much. Why you like Star? Uh, Love Me Tonight. P.S. We're not related. There we go, there. I got to see that. Hey, there you go. Hello, Alexis. <laughs> oh, and that's it. I mean, short and sweet. Me, short and sweet star, uh, stargazer questions there. Some great questions there. I'll probably do some more of this stuff now that we're coming at, we're, we're pretty much out of lockdown, so... I'll, I'll sing you a wee song for the next couple of days anyway and just click in with you and I hope that as we ease out of this that uh, you know we, 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 what am I trying to say that we take from it what do we take from this that we, uh, well, I personally you know that how much that I enjoy what I do and, and that's talking from a work point of view you know what I've learned is that you know I, playing live is a big big part of my makeup and uh, I'm looking forward to being able to do that for you and hopefully I'll get some shows for you that I can get out this year at least at least do like the first part of the Stargazer Stargazer tour or whatever you know just to get out there and say hello and and uh, so hopefully I can get some of those happening for you as uh, as we use out of this lockdown so anyway I'm rabbiting on but anyway thanks love to love see you soon Mwah! take care We quick joke why are pirates great singers? Because they can hit the high seas. <laughs> See, that appeals to me. <laughs>